You're listening to Flaunt. Find your sparkle and create a life you love after infidelity or betrayal. Have you been betrayed by life, your body, or someone that you love? You're not alone. No matter what you've been through, Naked Self-Worth helps you regain confidence, joy, and enthusiasm so you can create a life you love and flourish. Tune in weekly and learn how. Hello, welcome to Flaunt. Find your sparkle and create a life you love after infidelity or betrayal. Today we're going to talk about somatics. Somatics is one of those things that I love. I mean, I deeply, deeply love. And in case you don't exactly know what somatics is and what it means, then this is actually a perfect show for you because we're going to break it down, what it is, what it means, and most importantly, why it helps you heal from betrayal and feel better fast. Somatics basically, and again, we're going to break it down more, but basically it's movement. It's moving the body and using that movement and using the body in order to help you process emotions and to feel. As defined by Wikipedia, <laughs> somatics is a field within body works and movement studies, which emphasizes internal physical perception and experience. The term is used in movement therapy to signify approaches based on the soma, which is the body as perceived from within. Oh my gosh, let's think about that. The body as perceived from within. This is why I love somatics and using movement so much. We are the only person that knows how we feel inside. Nobody can look at us and tell us how we are feeling inside. That's not a thing. Similarly, we cannot look at another person and say without question how they are feeling inside either. It's just not possible. Yes, we can look at our kids and say, oh, you look tired. Or we can look at a friend or a partner or a coworker and say, you look stressed or you look like you're coming down with a cold. But we cannot look at somebody and know how they are feeling inside, how they are perceiving their body. And that is why this is such powerful work. So powerful, in fact, that on December 19th, if you were hearing the show in, in time, December 19th, I am doing a free movement holiday dance party Zoom class. Now, this is more than just a holiday dance party where we move. This is a deep somatic experience. This two hour workshop is truly designed to help you understand why it's important to identify how you feel, and even more importantly, how to change the way you feel so your experience living in your body is a good one. Because after all, isn't that truly, truly what it's about? I mean, sometimes we say like, you know, relationships are what, are, are what it's all about, and love and connection is what it's all about. And it's not, it's not that that's not what it's all about, but I think the base reason that those things are important is because it makes us feel good on the inside. You know, <laughs> really doing moving philanthropic work makes us have that good sensation inside ourselves, inside our bodies. Getting enough sleep makes us feel good. Waking up knowing that we are loved and cherished makes us feel really good inside. So to me, the root, the root sensation to everything that it is quote unquote really about is how we are feeling in our bodies, how we are feeling in our life, how we are feeling as we have this experience as us. And to me, that's what it's all about. 
And that is why it's important. So back to my holiday dance party, my holiday movement party. It is specifically designed to get you back in touch with yourself and the way that you feel in your body, the way that you feel moving through space and experiencing life. It's two hours on Zoom. It is from four to six Pacific, five to seven Mountain, six to eight Central, and seven to nine Eastern. In order to get the Zoom link, you must go to www.sparkleallseason.com. Put in your name and your email, and bam, immediately the Zoom link will be sent to you. What you need to know in order to be ready is that you don't need to do anything to be ready. You just need to show up. It's suitable for people of all ages, sizes, abilities. Literally, clear some space, and show up. Ideally, if you have a large button-up shirt, think about like a man's dress shirt, even if you can borrow a man's dress shirt or if you have like a flannel, that works. And then what I want you to have is a back hook bra that you can put over a t-shirt, over your tank top, something like that, because we're going to use the bra and the man's dress shirt as props as we move. And we're going to use meditation, we're going to learn some choreography, we're going to marry the masculine structure of learning choreography with the feminine emotion and feeling of how it feels to move through that choreography. And by the end of the class, this is what you will experience. You will experience a deep sense of connection to yourself, a deep sense of awareness around your expression and experience. And you're going to feel satisfaction, peace, and a whole lot of power. Power in knowing who you are, how it feels to be you, and I think even more importantly, what you deserve. Today's show we're really going to break down some of the things that we do in class. So if you're listening to the show, it is an absolutely perfect precursor to the event. And don't worry if you're listening to the show and you're thinking, well, dang it, December 19th is gone. It's over. Don't worry. I'm going to be doing these free somatic movement trauma processing classes pretty much once a quarter. So stay in touch. Always go to sparkleallseason.com. Put your name and your email address and I will let you know when the next free class is coming up. And you can do as many of the classes as you'd like to. Just because you've done one doesn't mean you won't get something out of a subsequent class. Because let's face it, (laughs) life is filled with traumas. Big T trauma, little T trauma, you know, minor inconveniences, major inconveniences. We always have something that we need to process. So that's another reason why I am doing these classes quarterly. Because things always come up and we just need to process. Process. Let's start there. (laughs) What does it really mean to process? Answer that for yourself. What does it mean to process? And then, kind of more importantly, why does it matter? What does it mean and why do we do it anyway? Okay, processing. Processing is taking several things, mixing them together to create something else. What I want you to imagine visualize or pretend right now is that you want to make chocolate chip cookies from scratch. Probably everybody here has made some sort of cookie by scratch at some point in their life so they can totally get what I'm saying. Okay, if you're wanting to make chocolate chip cookies, you've got flour, you've got sugar, you've got eggs, you've got butter, you've got chocolate chips, you've got salt, 
baking powder or baking soda, some sort of leavening, you've got maybe vanilla and then maybe some sort of secret ingredient. But you've got all of those different ingredients. On their own, those ingredients don't yield chocolate chip cookies. Even if you tossed everything in a bowl and then shoved them in the oven, you still wouldn't have chocolate chip cookies. All of those ingredients have different chemical properties. You know, I said some sort of leavening, baking soda, baking powder, we need salt. Depending on the altitude, I'm in Colorado, we've got a high altitude, we always need to have more flour or things don't rise. Things have to combine together. We have to have a chemical processing so all of those things can do their magic. So we have to stir the flour, the salt, the sugar, and the leavening. Usually it's, you know, all the dry ingredients. We mix them together. So there's little molecules <laughs> of each ingredient mixed together so they can work together and form that chemical reaction together. Then maybe we, you know, soften the butter so it's not so hard so you can actually start mashing and mixing the flour and the sugar you know, and combining it in a way so that it can combine. Because let's face it, if the butter is too hard, it's not gonna work. And if it's been melted completely and it's too soft, it's not gonna work either. All of those ingredients need to be handled in a certain way. Same thing, if you put the chocolate chips in too soon and then you're trying to mix it with a blender, it chunks up the chips and it makes it clunky and awkward and you end up damaging the chocolate chips and then it's more like chocolate flake cookies or you can't mix the other ingredients properly and then when you take the cookies out of the oven you end up biting into like a pod of flour or sugar that didn't get mixed in. So you've got to mix all of those ingredients together in a proper sort of a way and then you have to put them in the oven at the right temperature and you have to cook them for the right length of time. That's important too. Mixing, preparing, which is the process, and then putting them in the oven and cooking and waiting. So let's break that down a little bit more. What is process? Why is it important to process our emotions, to process our trauma, to process our pain? Why is that a thing? Why do we care? Why is it important? Well, just like when you're making cookies, you have to stir the stuff together. I am a coach. I coach women around betrayal recovery, around finding their sparkle, around reclaiming their identity and their self-worth so they can create a life they love right now, no matter what has gone on in their life. I can give you I can give any woman the best advice. I can give you the magic bullet. I can give you exactly what it is that you need to know. And unless you take that and process it, unless you stir it into your psyche, your spirits, your emotions, your body, your intellect, unless you do something with it and process it, you are not going to get any benefit from that. Similar, when you have a trauma, when you've been betrayed, whether it's by your body, your life, your somebody that you love, the patriarchy, anything, yourself, when you have that trauma and it comes in, it's just floating around stuck in your body. It's like that enormous chunk of flour that didn't get mashed up that you're going to bite into at some point when you're trying to eat this delicious cookie and it's gonna be like, ew, what is that? It is an unprocessed ingredient that is ruining this cookie. That's why process is important. You've gotta break down that trauma. You've gotta either dilute it into the rest of the cookie so you don't really notice it and it's not like this big flour bomb in your mouth, or you need to process it like a sifter so you're going sift, 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 and then all the good stuff falls through 
and you're left with that little flour chunk that is too hard to process that you can then get rid of because you've sifted, you've used that process. So process is both. It's on both ends of the coin. It's processing in the good stuff so it can do its job. If you have a too hard chunk of baking soda or baking powder that has not been stirred into the cookie, it cannot act, act as or serve as. I don't know which one it is. Anyway, it cannot serve as a leavening device for the cookies. It's not going to work because you didn't process it in the cookie. And then the same thing with trauma, on the other side, we've got to process and take out or redistribute stuff that we don't want. So process works for things that we want and things that we don't want. And no matter what it is, no matter if we're trying to incorporate something or get rid of something, having that process is vital to our success. So that's what process is. Okay, so, so Laura, we've talked about somatics and moving the body and we've talked about a dance party and we've talked about process. How does this all go together? I am so glad you asked. One of the best ways to process both good and bad things is through movement. When we move the body, we are creating a process. We are saying, okay, I've got this good ingredient that I want to add in and I've got some bad stuff that I want to take out and I don't know how to do that. Movement is the process. You don't need to know how or why. You just need to give yourself that space, that container in order to let everything happen. Movement is the oven. Movement is where things bake and the cookies rise and you go from this bowl of mashy dough that is this process that's been stirred around to putting it in the oven and then you pull out a beautiful, glorious chocolate chip cookie. So that is what these holiday dance party classes are about. That is what this process is about. It's about taking the good, it's about taking the bad and then using that movement as the oven to process and to bake and to yield something that is amazing. So in a space of two hours, we're gonna start with a meditation. We're going to ask your subconscious mind to bring something up that it needs to let go of. Whether it's a big T trauma or a little T trauma or just a minor inconvenience or frustration, we're going to ask the brain to pinpoint something to find that little chunk of flour that is not, not beneficial to the whole rest of the cookie that you want. And we're going to ask it to be sorted and sifted through the dance, through the movement, so you can let go of it. We are also going to add in some wisdom. We're going to add in some truth bombs, some lovely wit, wisdom, aha moments, all of that stuff. And then we're going to shake that through and incorporate it into your heart, into your emotions, into your body with that movement. Part and parcel with that, what is also going on around that is when you are given movement, it's such a perfect opportunity to show the difference between masculine and feminine, form and flow. Because after all, isn't that what life is truly about? It's, it's about that marrying together of the masculine and the feminine, the yin and the yang, all of that stuff. And I'm going to say more about that next. But first, I want to go back to the processing and the cooking. And I ask you to sit with that for a little bit. What would it be like to have the current Thing that you're struggling with, the reoccurring thoughts, the grief, the pain, the frustration, the not knowing who you are and what you want, whatever it is for you, what would it be like to process that? 
what would it be like to process that? What would it free you up to do if you did not have that mental space being occupied? If you did not have those chemical dumps, you know, of cortisol or adrenaline hitting your system throughout the day, what would it be like to be free? What would you have time to do that you're not doing now? How would you be that is different than how you are being now? Whether in terms of self-expression, confidence, joy, whatever it is. I want you to spend a little bit of time thinking about that. And then, I want you to take another leap. And I want you to think about the time that it takes to bake those cookies, that oven time. You've done the process. You've found all the right ingredients. You've mixed them all together. And now you need to put them in the oven to bake at the right temperature for the right amount of time. What is your body sensation? What is your internal experience like as you're waiting? Are you patient? Are you hopeful? Are you distrusting? So many of us who have been betrayed really struggle with trust. We don't trust other people. We don't trust the world. I know for me, it was more than just my husband betrayed me and I don't think I can trust him or I don't know how I can trust men again. It was more than that. It was my whole world view. I thought because I was a good person and who tried to do the right thing, the good things would happen to me because good people are taken care of, right? I really had my worldview altered because of that experience. I felt very unsafe because I thought, I really have no control. I can do the right thing and people can poop on me. <laughs> and it doesn't matter that I'm doing the right thing. And nobody is like standing above us keeping score saying, ooh, Laura, you did the right thing. You get the gold star. And I thought this is so unfair and this is scary. No, 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 more than scary, this is terrifying. Because why bother being good? Why bother trying? Because none of it matters. Because there are no guarantees and I have no control. That's my internal sensation. That was my internal sensation during that wait time during that oven time. What is your internal sensation when something bad has happened? What is your internal sensation when you have all the right pieces? I've seen the counselor, I've read the books, I've done the online courses, and I still don't feel better. Now what? What is your internal sensation around that? Do you do what I did and internalize the pain? This is scary. This is terrifying. What did I do wrong? Why am I bothering? Or do you find a way to wait patiently and see how things turn out? I don't know about you, but for me, waiting patiently is one of the hardest things to do. And here's the thing about waiting patiently. Think about when you're waiting for cookies. If you're constantly opening and closing the oven to take a peek at them, you let the heat out, the cookies are gonna fall flat and it's gonna take longer for them to cook. What's gonna happen if you jack up the temperature because you want them to cook faster? They're not gonna cook right. You're gonna burn them because you've cooked them too fast. And I wanna point this one out on the flip side, 
if you're not quite ready for cookies, I'm not quite ready for cookies, and you lower the temperature, you're gonna mess them up too. Here's a big truth bomb for you. Sometimes we delay our healing because we're afraid of what it will look like when we're healed. We're afraid that once we have those cookies, once we have the beautiful life, once we have, you know, a new partner, we've figured out life on our own, we have the ideal job, that it's not going to last, that we're going to train wreck it, that it's a big problem. And then we think, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. And we lower the temperature and we ruin the outcome because of our fear of healing. And what I want to say is, there's a little of all of that in all of us. All of us want to move too fast and all of us want to move too slow. And that's just the humanity of it and that's okay. All I'm asking is for you to think about it. For you to be honest about whatever is coming up for you and for you to simply be curious and not judge it or defend it. Our need to defend ourselves is huge. Our need to explain ourselves is huge. And basically, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that we are aware of our own internal body sensations. And when we're so busy defending or explaining, we can't be feeling what's really going on. And that's what that oven time is all about. It's about going within and feeling what's going on with us. And that's why the dance and the movement is so imperative and important. Okay, I'm going to use this as a bridge to move into the masculine and feminine and to answer that question, why the movement is so important and why the movement does that, why the movement is the oven, why the movement is the thing that can bake the cookie. So to recap, you've got the negative trauma, that little clot of flour that's too hard. You've got the positive nuggets of wisdom. You've got all the ingredients. You've got the process, which is sifting and sorting and deciding what you need to get rid of and mixing things together and getting the coaching, reading the books, getting those aha moments so you have everything that you need. Now we dance. Now we bake them. Okay. I said earlier, masculine, feminine, light, dark, yin yang, whatever that is. The masculine is the structure. I'm not talking about like sexuality or men or women, but masculine energy, masculine things have structure and they have form. They are the banks of, masculine is the banks of the river, the tracks that the train runs on, the bowl that holds the soup. The masculine is the container. It's the solid, hard form. Feminine is the river that flows along the banks. If the banks weren't there, the water would just go and it would seep everywhere and it would just soak into the ground and there wouldn't be a river. You need the water to create a river, but you need the banks to hold the river. Same thing with a train. If you have a train and no train tracks, the train can't go. It's too heavy. The wheels won't just spin on the ground. The train will actually start digging into the earth and it will stay stuck and it will never go anywhere. I said the soup bowl. The bowl is masculine. The soup is positive. The soup is the thing that nourishes, that tastes good that provides sustenance and support. The soup is the thing that matters. And without a bowl, the soup is useless. 
That's the marrying of the masculine and the feminine, the thing that serves. The soup, the train filled with supplies, the water of the river. The thing inside is the thing that really matters, but without that form, you can't get it. And it becomes useless. So that is the basics of the masculine, feminine, light, dark, yin, yang, all of that good stuff. Why is that the oven? Why is that movement? Why does that matter? Okay, when I use movement to help people process and heal, choreography, the movement, I will teach you what to do. Step, touch, right arm up, left arm up, look left, bend your knees, circle your hips. I will give you that form, that structured piece of movement. That's the choreography. This goes together in this way. Okay, what happens with that? Did you feel some anxiety? I really hope you felt some anxiety. I really hope what came up for you was, I don't know how to dance. Step, touch, reach. Oh my God, I'm going to look like a fool. I can't do this. I'm not a dancer. Way outside my comfort zone. And I will say, oh yes, I am so glad you felt that way. Or on the other extreme, you might have thought, ooh, I used to do that when I was a kid. I love doing that. I can totally do that. Notice what came up for you. That is that somatics. That is the awareness of the body sensation. Did something come up when I started talking about teaching you movements and having you move through with your body? And what was it that came up? Insecurity, I'm not enough. Fear, oh God, I'm gonna do it wrong. Joy, holy cow, I haven't done that for so long. This is gonna be fun. Notice that internal sensation. And then take that even one step further. Did you wilt? Ugh, I can't do that. Or did you inhale and expand? Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Notice what you did. Now, I don't want you to try to like correct it or change it. Just notice that somatics. That is your relationship with the masculine. That is your relationship with form and structure. And if you had that experience of, oh my God, this terrifies me, or eh, a little outside of my comfort zone, but I'm really willing to try it, then this is exactly what you need because it's giving you some practice with that form, with that bowl, riverbanks, train tracks. It's giving you practice with that. Now, on the other side, we have the flow, we have sensation, we have the dance, we have the feminine, we have the thing that matters. But you remember what I said, we need the form, we need the masculine to transport that thing that matters, the feminine. And that without the masculine, without that form, the flow can never be a thing. So, to those of you who are like, woohoo, I got this, you've got the masculine. You've got that. What you might need more of, and why this class is perfect for you, is the flow, the feeling, the letting go of, the moving off the rails, the jumping the bank in creating your own tributary, the passion and the feeling of expressing outside of that form. What you might need is more of the flow and the experience 
and the deep joy that you feel through that. So the feminine is all about noticing what's going on in the body. What is your internal sensation of yourself? What is your internal sensation of your experience? I like to tell the people that I work with that what I want for them is to wake up every day excited about what the day holds. As they move throughout the day to have so many moments of wow, wonder, I love my life. This is cool. Moments throughout the day where they're affirming and they're noticing how cool this is. This is thrilling. This is challenging. But just where they're noticing. And where every night when they fall into bed, they fall into bed with a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. Knowing that the day that they lived was a very worthwhile day. That is what I want for you. That is for what I want for my clients. That is what I want for myself. That is truly what I want for everybody in the world to experience. And that is that somatic awareness. Unless you understand that you are the only one in charge of noticing that within yourself, creating that within yourself. You are the only one that knows what ingredients you need, what process you need to take, and how to heal that. One of the reasons that coaching, counseling, self-help programs, books, all of that doesn't work is that people aren't given the somatic awareness. They aren't given the oven. They're given all the ingredients and then all the ingredients sit on a shelf and they don't have the time to process. They don't stir them together. They don't sort out the bad. They don't mix in the good and then they don't put it in the oven to bake. That's why so many people are always saying, I'm so broken, I'm so lost. I've done every you know self-help book on the planet. I've seen a counselor for 15 years. Oh my God, you don't need to see a counselor for 15 years. Like, let's get to processing already. Let's get to healing already. Why are we continuing to add ingredients? Take those ingredients, process them, bake the cookies, and see what you come up with. Then you can see a counselor again. I'm not against counseling. I think counseling is something that all of us should be doing throughout our lives. What I am against is beating the same horse to death over and over and over and over and over and never doing anything with it and never moving on and never becoming truly aware of how you're feeling and what those sensations are and creating the life that you want, and more importantly, feeling the life that you want. Right now, as I'm recording this, we're moving rapidly towards Christmas, which means in the whole like collective society around us, we're all talking about, you know, donations and charity and, and gifts for others. And, you know, it's more important to give than receive and blah, 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 blah. And things don't matter. People matter. And, and let's get into, you know, those cherished holiday feelings and blah, 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 blah. And here's what I'm going to say about that. Okay, we're, we're, we're doing the talk. We're talking that people are more important than things. We're talking about connection being more important. I would rather have connection with my family than a present. Yes, I would rather be loved than have, you know, a great million dollar mansion. Yes, like all of that, we're talking about it. We know the language. What we're missing is the somatic piece. How do you transcend from knowing that that's important to feeling how it feels to have that. 
and not to just keep that feeling alive for one day because it's Christmas, yay, we can do this, jazz hands. But to keep that feeling alive in your body, in your heart, all year, forever, for the rest of your life. What would your life be like if every day was just like Christmas? I mean, think about that phrase. If every day could be just like Christmas, what a wonderful world it would be. Yes. And why isn't every day like Christmas? The only reason every day, <clears throat> the only reason every day is not like Christmas right now is because we're not aware. Having a holiday gives us the opportunity to pause and to stop. The store is closed. We can't go to the store. Our job is closed. We can't be, well, we can be sending emails, but nobody's going to be responding. We pause and we stop and we feel. And I think the reason so many people get depressed around the holidays and hate the holidays is because that break gives them the opportunity to start feeling. And they go, oh gosh, I don't like my internal experience and I don't know what to do about it because I've tried it in the past. I've read the books. I've seen the counselor. I hired the coach. I listened to the podcast and I Googled answers and it didn't change anything. And what I want to say is yes, congratulations. You collected the ingredients. That is just like me saying I have the eggs and the flour and the sugar and the vanilla and the butter and the chocolate chips. Yes, you've got it all. Now what? Now you gotta mix those together. And then you've gotta move. And you've gotta process and you've gotta heal. And as we're mixing those things together and as we're dancing, as we're moving, you're dancing between the masculine and the feminine. Here's the choreography that I've given you. I can't do it, it's too fast, it's too complicated, it's too whatever. My body is incapable of that. I'm not in good enough shape. My back hurts. All of those limiting factors come up. And I say, yes, let all of those things come up. Because when they come up, you've got to feel it to heal it. So then it all starts coming up. I'm too fat. I'm too old. I'm in too much pain. I don't understand. I don't have enough space. My jeans are too tight and I can't move. Whatever it is. I don't know what this is stupid. Think about what you have just learned about yourself. You've just learned about a whole lot of fears and limitations that are coming up. And then you've learned how you respond to that by calling it stupid. By saying, I never wanted to do this anyway. By saying, this isn't what I expected. Think about all of those things, all of those defenses, justifications, excuses that come up. And then just sit with those and feel with what you're feeling. I feel icky. I feel defeated. I feel ashamed. I feel grouchy. And then the feminine flow kicks in. I don't have to follow this form completely. If my knees are so creaky that I can't do this, if my jeans are so tight that I can't do this, if I can't circle my head and shoulders because they hurt. If I can't keep three moves together in my mind because I have not practiced that body coordination, what can I do? What can I do? How can I flow and express outside of the confines of this container? 
And that's where the magic kicks in. The magic is not in nailing the choreography and remembering every move every time and making your body look like mine. The magic is in taking that form and then feeling your way through it, hitting the places that feel good for you and creating new and more beautiful and better things that work for you. So if I am teaching you a step, touch, step, touch, step, touch, that's the form. Bam, if you do step touch, sure it feels good because you can nail it. But if you're doing a step, slide, step, slide, that feels better for you because that's flowing. If you're adding whoo, a little body wave or a shoulder shimmy, or if you're doing it smaller and more quiet because your power is small and tight and personal and quiet, that's the flow that I'm talking about. That's the what am I going to do with this step touch. And it's so important and it's so glorious because you're actually using movement to see what's happening inside. So that internal world that sometimes you're not even aware of, all of a sudden it becomes expressed. A step touch brings out so much. People cry so often as I'm teaching dance because they are seen. They are truly seen for the first time. The step touch, they can bring their quietness. They can bring their flow. They can bring their bigness. They can bring their awkwardness. They can bring their perfection. They can bring whatever it is. And that internal experience becomes manifest externally in the movement and in your awareness of what's happening. And then we're in community and we're witnessing each other. And I'm seeing all the different variations and you are seeing all the different variations. And you know how I said earlier, we can't see what's going on in somebody else? No, we can't, but we can see the way that they dance. We can see the way that they flow. We can see how that energy is moving around them. We can see how they take a step touch and how they flow with it. And it becomes a dance and it becomes an expression and it becomes a beautiful healing. If you think about a dance recital with what, four to eight year olds, maybe four to 10 year olds, and you see them counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it's very rote. They're going through the movements, arm, reach, arm, tap, toe, point, knee, up. We see them in the masculine energy of doing the steps. Now, have you ever seen a professional ballet or modern dancers? Have you ever seen any kind of dance and it's this living energy? They're leaping, they're defying the laws of gravity. It's emotional, they're swirling, things are pouring through them. And it makes you wanna cry just because of the beauty of it. And you're like, oh, I want to feel like that. I want to leap like that. I want to move through the air like that. I want to express just like that. That's flow. And even though you can't see and know their internal state, you feel that freedom because it's made manifest in the way that they're moving. Not because they know the choreography, but because they're, they know their flow. And because they have used the masculine, the banks, the bowl, the rails, they have used that to catapult and to launch their own flow. And they are aware of how that feels. And then when the dance is done, they're literally drained of the toxins, drained of the trauma, drained because they have moved that energy and that experience through them. And they are fresh and ready for more. It's been an interesting mix 
of using the dance analogy and the cookie analogy. Dancing around the mixture of both of those. But we've all baked something. And while dancing is uniquely human, and it's innate, and it's powerful, it's something that has kind of been socialized out of us. Because as we grow up, we just don't do it. Little kids dance around all the time. They know how to dance. They know how to move. They're aware of their internal sensation. They are aware of getting lost in the movement and getting lost in the flow. They know that dance heals. I know that dance heals. You know that dance heals. And by dance, I am using dance in the broadest sense of the word. Yes, dance is, you know, Balanchine choreography passed down from generations and, and very large structured. But dance is also shaking your hips in the kitchen as you wash dishes. Dance is powerful. You can dance without ever standing up. I don't care what your age, your size, your abilities are. We can all dance. Shoulders, arms, undulating. One of the things that I love talking about and laughing about when I teach my sacred dance classes is just like writhing mounds of flesh. We can just sit there and we can writhe and move. And that's that flow. And it's really scary for some of us to get in that space of flow. Like I said earlier, if the idea of learning choreography panics you, you need it. <laughs> And if the idea of flow panics you, that's what you need. I tend to be more of a structured dancer. When somebody says, just freestyle, I kind of go, <laughs> but I don't know what to do. I have all that flow in me, but I need the structure to get it out. It's threatening. If I just said, turn on the music and dance, that can threaten in the same way saying, I'm going to teach you step kick, step ball change can feel threatening. Just notice which side you're on, which feels more threatening. Because it is illuminative of where you're at in the masculine or in the feminine. Of where you're at in the process. So join me. December 19th, sparkleallseason.com. No matter where we are in the year, go to sparkleallseason.com, put in your name, put in your email address, and I will continually send you the link for the next event. It's two hours. This one is December 19th, 4 to 6 Pacific, 5 to 7 Mountain, 6 to 8 Central, 7 to 9 Eastern, on Zoom. Clear yourself a little bit of space so you can move. Have a large button-up shirt, a back hook bra that you can wear over a t-shirt or over a tank top. Bring your trauma, bring your pain, bring your stress, bring your joy. Connect with me, connect with others. Let's move in and out of the masculine, the feminine. Let's dance with all of it, literally and metaphorically. I don't care your age, your size, your condition. I don't care if you can't stand up. I don't care if you can't bend over. Do what you can. I will give you some of the form. I will give you some of the flow. Together we will marry that. We will process. We will stir it all up. Then we will put it in the oven to heal. To bake. And what I promise is by the end of the experience, you are going to have a deep somatic awareness of yourself. Where you're at on this journey, whether it's an infidelity journey or some other kind of betrayal journey, 
or whether that's in the past and you're right now dealing with family stuff. Wherever you are at, on whatever journey you are at, I promise that you will have a deep awareness of yourself, your situation, and above all, you will have healed a little and you will feel better. I promise awareness and I promise a better feeling. SparkleAllSeason.com I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to hear what you want to get out of this and I can't wait to dance and play. And I can't wait for you to just feel a little bit better in your body, in your heart, and in your mind. SparkleAllSeason.com Have an amazing week. And as usual, always remember to flaunt exactly who you are because who you are is always more than enough. Tune in next time to Flaunt. Find your sparkle and create a life you love after infidelity or betrayal with radio host and live choreographer Laura Cheadle every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Develop naked self-worth and reclaim your confidence, enthusiasm, and joy so you can create a life you love and embrace who you are today. Download your free Sparkle Through Betrayal Recovery Guide at NakedSelfWorth.com. 